Good morning. Happy Sabbath. This month, we observe the anniversaries of two defining events in American history. The first defining event was the signing of the United States Constitution on September 17, 1787, 227 years ago this month. 39 of 55 delegates were signers among them George Washington and James Madison, Jr., the first and fourth presidents of the United States. Among notable non-signers, of which were not present, were Thomas Jefferson, serving as the U.S. Minister to France, and John Adams, serving as a U.S. Minister to Britain, the second and third presidents of the United States. The youngest signer was Jonathan Dayton of New Jersey, age 26. The oldest was Benjamin Franklin, 81, the sage of the Constitutional Convention. As Benjamin Franklin left the Pennsylvania State House after the final meeting of the Constitutional Convention on September 17, 1787, he was approached by the wife of the mayor of Philadelphia. She was curious as to what the new government would be. Franklin replied, a republic, madam, if you can keep it. Fittingly, the word democracy appears nowhere in the Constitution. <clears throat> there is a dramatic difference between the two. A democracy is majority rule. A republic protects the rights of the individual. At the conclusion of the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin observed the symbol of a half sun on George Washington's chair and remarked, I have the happiness to know that it is a rising and not a setting sun. The sun did indeed rise on this nation in the years that followed. With the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights behind them, the people of this great nation flourished like no other in human history. Was it perfect? No. But the people were empowered with the greatest form of government ever devised by man to loose the fetters and chains of government intrusion from their personal and private lives. Self-rule. God himself raised this country as the beast with two horns like a lamb but spoke like a dragon. The two horns represent Protestant and Republican principles. As long as the people live by these principles, there would always be liberty. Now, after 200 plus years, the two horned beast is giving up its Protestant and Republican principles and starting to speak like a dragon. <clears throat> it is getting bolder and bolder. As our government takes its position to be the world leader in decadence, lying, treachery, deceit, tyranny, treason, arrogance, murder, and denier of individual rights. We see Benjamin Franklin's sun beginning to set. And when the sun of freedom finally sets here, then it will have set on the entire world. This sad reality then brings us to the second defining event in American history, the attacks of September 11th, 2001. We all remember the vivid images as we watched in disbelief and shock as the events of that day unfolded. <clears throat> the first tower had already been hit by the time media attention was focused there. Then, as the whole world watched, <clears throat> another plane hit the second tower. Then more reports of planes being hijacked, crashed into the Pentagon, courageous passengers of another flight fighting back and then their flight crashing into a Pennsylvania field. What an outrage. We wanted revenge. We all rallied behind President Bush and for the first time in decades, the states seemed to be united again. We, went, we sent our young men and women to fight the terrorists. They went to Afghanistan. Then before we knew it, they were sent to Iraq. 
and Afghanistan took a back seat in the media. By the way, we still have not found the weapons of mass destruction we went to Iraq to find. Well, 13 years later, we are still in Afghanistan and chasing the terrorists all around the world. At the same time, the terrorists seem to be getting stronger and stronger, and our liberties are getting weaker and weaker. A side note here, <clears throat> before we entered Afghanistan, they supplied around 5% of the world's heroin poppies. Now it is over 90% of the world's heroin poppies. This tells us a little bit about why the war on drugs is also a laughable joke. If these things don't strike you as being odd, then maybe this will. What happened to World Trade Center Building 7? This was the third building to collapse into its own footprint that day. Two planes, three buildings. Somebody is lying and it sounds like a dragon to me. Regardless of what you believe about the events of September 11, 2001, the fact is those events were used by our government to limit our freedoms and increase government power and intrusion into our lives. All in the name of security, beware. As our friend Benjamin Franklin said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserves neither liberty nor safety. The point of looking at these two defining events in American history is the glaring contrast between them and our place in the prophetic stream of time. We have already noted how this country was raised in prophecy and what its ultimate function would be being used as a tool by Satan as he goes around roaring ro like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Speaking as a dragon, is it any surprise that it will also act like the dragon in a no-holds-barred, last desperate gasp, duel to the death war with God's remnant people? Jesus says, fear not. He will be with us to the very end. He is calling all of us to serve in his army. The Bible tells us that the remnant people will have patience. This is translated cheerful endurance. If we truly are soldiers in the Lord's army, then we will have peace in these perilous times. <clears throat> we hear the dragon speaking. We hear the lion roaring. Our response to that should and will be the loud cry. Go to your knees today and join the Lord's army. The only way to true eternal liberty and freedom is by surrendering. When Satan knocks you down, get up and stand on your own two knees. One of us on our knees surrender to Jesus is more powerful than an unconsecrated host on their feet. The army of God marches on its knees. The son of temporal liberties, as preci precious as they are, is indeed setting. <clears throat> but the son of righteousness is calling us to receive eternal freedom and liberty. Thank you. Amen.